Hi, this is JD with a new edition of Weekly News Spills. Good news stories from 2022. Anyone would be forgiven for thinking there was little good news in a year dominated by the war in Ukraine, as well as the cost of living crisis and record climate related disasters. But there were indeed some bright spots. First up, Almost a million Ukrainians are in uniform right now, serving in the military. A small number of them are queer. Increasingly though, they are demanding their rights at a time where Russia's government is doing all it can to fight what is called LGBT ideology and Ukraine increasingly feels like discriminating against LGBTQ people is simply the un-Ukrainian thing to do. Next up, Bitfront property was returned to its black owners after nearly 100 years in the United States. This was a landmark decision. It was the first time the government has returned land that was wrongfully taken from black families. It is an example of racial justice and it could set a precedent for future cases. Hong Kong cancelled some of the strictest COVID border controls in the world this year. That includes the unpopular compulsory hotel quarantine. This had been imposed since the pandemic began and now Hong Kong people are allowed to travel overseas for the very first time in nearly three years. The loosening zero COVID policy also brought international sports events and concerts back to town. Next up. Something truly remarkable is the resilience and courage of those who continue to stand up for civil rights and freedom in Turkey. The government has further intensified its crackdown on free speech and association with zero tolerance for women's protest, LGBTQ plus marches, basically any public expression. Yet groups like the We Will Stop Femicide platform and other human rights Defenders managed to organize and make their voices heard. Last but not the least is a good news story from West Africa. It revolves around a man named Dr. Abdel Hara, who has been working tirelessly to preserve Mali's written history. The historical documents he has helped rescue go back to the 11th century. This year, Dr. Hara partnered with Google to digitize more than 40,000 pages of the delicate manuscript ensuring that Mali's long legacy of academic excellence is preserved. So there you have it, some good news you might have missed. Pele laid to rest as mourners gather for the football king. The Brazilian soccer legend's coffin has moved through the streets of Santos in the Sao Paulo state where well over 200,000 people have gathered to pay their respects. Pele was buried in his final resting place after about 230,000 mourners, including President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, filed past his open casket to pay homage. Crying, waving flags and chanting thousand goals, Brazilians flooded the streets to say goodbye to Pele widely considered the greatest player in the history of the world's most popular sport. FIFA president Gianni Infantino has said that every country should name a stadium after Pele. I am here with a lot of emotion, he said. Sadness but also with a smile because he gave us so many smiles. As FIFA will pay a tribute to the king and we ask the whole world to observe a minute of silence. One of the most moving moments came when the truck paused outside the home of Pele's 100-year-old mother. CES 2023 highlights tech addressing global challenges. The Consumer Electronics Show, the biggest technology trade show in the world, is once again open for business. After two challenging years coping with the COVID-19 pandemic, which was particularly difficult for the conference and trade show industry, CES is expected to welcome about 100,000 attendees this week in Las Vegas. Digital health, transportation technology 
and the metaverse are just a few of the latest technological innovations being showcased in Las Vegas. This year's theme is technology helping to address the world's greatest challenges, said John Kelly, vice president and acting show director of CES. Show organizers expect increased focus on the metaverse, a shared digital reality connecting users. From the internet highway to the interstate, automobiles have always had a major presence at the show with more than 300 auto industry exhibitors showing off their latest products. Organizers say there is also growth in marine technology with boat manufacturers moving towards sustainable forms of energy. The battery operated West Shark by the Dutch firm Ran Marine Technology is an autonomous surface vessel designed to remove algae, biomass and floating pollution such as plastics from lakes, ponds and other coastal waterways. Another area that's growing significantly at CES is digital health. Canada-based eSight Eyewear plans to display a headset designed to help people with visual impairments such as age-related macular degeneration also known as AMD. When a person with AMD looks at your face, they wouldn't see any distinct features. It would just be flesh tones, explain Roland Mattern, eSight Eyewear's director of marketing. Once the user puts on this device, they will be able to see distinct features such as eyebrows, mouth and eyes, Mattern said. Users can literally see your entire face, he said, your reaction. And that is an important feature because so much of communication is being able to see the other person's reaction. It's just one example of the many technologies on display this year at CES 2023, where companies from all corners of the world will come together to share their latest innovation. Celebrating the start of a new one and having survived the old one. 2023 is about resurgence. Resurgence of the world after COVID-19 and after the war in Ukraine. We want it to end. New Year celebrations across the globe marked an end to a year that brought war in Europe, a new chapter in the British monarchy and global worries over inflation. The new year began in the tiny atoll nation of Kiribati in the Central Pacific, then moved across Russia and New Zealand before heading deeper time zone by time zone through Asia and Europe and into the Americas. At least for a day, thoughts focused on possibilities, even elusive ones like world peace and mastering, finally a resolve to keep the next array of resolutions. In a sight of that hope, children met St. Nicholas in a crowded metro station in Kharkiv, Ukraine. In Australia, more than 1 million people crowded along Sydney's waterfront for a multi-million dollar celebration based around the themes of diversity and inclusion. Taiwan celebrated the new year at 11 a.m. EST with a large firework display over the Taipei skyline. The fireworks were launched from the Taipei 101 building. Dubai, the luxury capital of the Middle East, is ringing in 2023 in its singular style fireworks from the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world and other locations. In Paris, thousands celebrated on the Champs Elysees. Big Ben shines as more than a hundred thousand revelers gathered along the River Thames to watch a spectacular fireworks show around the London Eye. Even with the most deeply held differences, treating the other person with respect and as a fellow human being is always a good first step towards greater understanding. Americans on the East Coast celebrated the New Year after the ball dropped in New York City.
Rio de Janeiro's Copacabana Beach welcomed a small crowd of a few thousand for a short fireworks display. In Auckland, New Zealand, large crowds gathered below the sky tower where a 10 second countdown to midnight preceded fireworks. In China, people cautiously looked forward to 2023 after a recent easing of pandemic restriction unleashed the virus but also signaled a return to normal life. That is all for today. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay blessed and see you in my next weekly episode.